Lander, Council Member Lander might be a couple minutes late. We can wait for him a little bit, but um, I would start because he never guaranteed that he'll be able to make it. We, is there another vote after this? Because we can hold it open for a few minutes. We can hold Lander, it open. We can hold it open Lander for a couple of minutes. A couple minutes late. We can wait for him a little bit, but um, I would start because he never guaranteed. That's fine. I'm ready to go. Okay. Um, Sergeant Leonardo, you can start. Sergeant Jones. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committees on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their videos. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent. And thank you for your cooperation, and we are ready to begin. I think that's my cue. I'm gonna gavel. Does everybody notice that I'm practicing my gaveling? Uh, good morning, my name is Andrew Cohen and I'm the chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I am joined by my colleagues on the committee, council members Kozlowitz, Brannon, Chin, and Yeager. Today we'll, we will be voting on two bills, proposed introduction bill number 30, 2032A, sponsored by myself by request of the mayor and proposed introduction bill number 2049A sponsored by council member Mark Levine. Uh, the Department of Consumer Affairs and Worker Protection is responsible for enforcing the city's various worker protection laws, including paid safe and sick leave, fair work week, and the Freelancer Isn't Free Act. These laws offer New York City workers some of the strongest protections available. Previously, the city's paid sick safe laws were also more comprehensive than current state law. However, on September 30th of this year, New York State's new sick leave law will go into effect. While the aim of the law is similar to New York City's law, some of the provisions exceed the protections afforded at the local level. Therefore, the purpose of intro 2032A is to bring city law in line with the new changes at state level. If enacted, 2032A would require employers of, five, employers of five or more employees, one or more domestic worker, or four or more employees with a net income of more than a million dollars to provide 40 hours of paid sick and safe leave to their workers. Under the existing New York City law, such paid leave entitlements are generally only provided in workplaces with five or more employees. Furthermore, intro 2032A would require employers with four or fewer employees and an income of less than a million dollars to provide 40 hours of unpaid leave. However, it would also require New York City employers with 100 or more employees to provide those workers with 56 hours of paid sick, paid safe and sick leave up from 40 hours. Other provisions of the bill include providing employees with written notice of their leave entitlements updates to the definition of domestic worker and safe leave, and authority for corporation counsel to bring a civil action against an employer who is engaged in a pattern and practice of violations. Finally, the bill will also eliminate the 120 day waiting period and instead allow employees to use their sick and safe leave as soon as it's accrued. In, in conjunction with intro 2032A, we are also voting on intro 2049A, sponsored by council member Mark Lean. This bill establishes specific protections for hotel workers. The COVID-19 pandemic has hit all industries and workers hard, but some have been so devastated that it is difficult to imagine how they will recover, even after the global emergency is over. The city's hotel industry is one such example. In normal times, New York City is a mecca for tourists. Over the last 10 years, the number of visitors to the city has increased exponentially. And last year, there were a record 67 million visitors. However, with COVID-19 restrictions forcing people to stay home, the city's tourism industry has diminished substantially, to say the least, and ho the hotel industry is bearing much of the brunt. Prior to the pandemic, New York City had 703 hotels operating approximately 138,000 rooms in an industry that employed an estimated 300,000 workers. At the peak of the pandemic though, dur dur during late March and April, nine in 10 hotels furloughed their workers and nationally, 7.5 million industry jobs were lost. Although things have improved slightly by August, 
over half the industry's hotel workers had not been reinstated. With the city's hotel occupancy rates still way below normal trends, for example, in the last week of August, they were down a whopping 72%. The outlook for the city's hotel industry and its workers is bleak. Typically, hotelers need an occupancy rate of about 50% if they have any likelihood of breaking even. Hence, if hotelers are unable to stay afloat, there are serious concerns that they will be forced into bankruptcy or sell-up. While this may help individual hotelers, this puts hotel workers in a precarious state with little to no guarantee regarding the security of their job, let alone their wages, benefits, and working conditions. <clears throat> Intro 2049A attempts to provide some assurances by granting hotel workers basic rights should their employers sell the hotel. For instance, Intro uh, 2049A, once a new ownership commences, the new hotel owner must provide employment to existing hotel workers for at least 90 days. Furthermore, the conditions of this employment must be at least the same as the conditions provided by the previous hotel owner. If the new ownership determines that they do not need all the existing hotel workers, then they must retain existing workers for employment pursuant to the terms of their collecting, collective bargaining agreement or by seniority and experience. At the end of the 90-day period, the new employer is required to perform a written evaluation of the worker, and if the worker receives a satisfactory result, the new employer must offer them continued employment under the conditions set by the previous employer. If enacted, Intro 2049A will also provide additional protections for consumers by requiring hotelers to provide their customers with at least 24 hours notice if there are disruptions to services. This includes services such as Wi-Fi, in-room appliances, advertised am amenities, infestations or the loss of legally required acceptable ex accessibility equipment, such as ramps or elevators. Hotelers may not charge fees or penalties to customers who decide to cancel a reservation due to a service disruption, unless notice was provided prior to the booking. A violation of this bill could result in the hoteler facing a fine of $500 for the first offense and up to $5,000 for subsequent offenses within a two-year period. We know that the hotel industry will face ongoing pressures as it recovers from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, but intro 2049 ensures that hotel workers are not forced to pay the price for this recovery. Before I ask, the, I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, I wanna thank council member Levine for his hard work and leadership on this. Um, I will now ask uh, the committee clerk to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on consumer affairs. One second, chair Cohen, items are coupled, excuse me. Excellent, good morning, Mr. Martin. I also want to acknowledge, I see council member Lander has joined us. Uh, and now that Brad's here, I'm gonna vote aye. Thank you. Chin. I vote aye. Ku. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Lander. I vote aye. Brannon. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Uh, I, can I close? Because I'm.